Hi guys, welcome to this tutorial. This is Teacher Raya. So in this session, we're going to solve question 24 from the KCSE Mathematics Paper 1 2021. So guys, if you stay with me to the end, I will show you exactly what this question looks like the distance, the velocity, and the acceleration. And in the future, if you do get stuck with these questions, these type of questions, you know exactly where to go and what to do, and then you can cross-check your answers. All right, guys, we are told the displacement s meters of a moving particle after t second is given by s equals to all this, and then we're asked to determine the velocity of the particle when t is equal to zero. Guys, you know what velocity is, is change of distance divided by change of time. Now we have the function for displacement. That means if we want velocity, all we have to do is differentiate with respect to t, time. Okay, so we're going to do ds dt. Okay, so ds dt of this function is going to be, what do we need to do? The t cube, this 3 is going to go over here, so we have 3 times, and then we have our number as usual, 2 third, and the power of t is going to be 1 less. That's going to be 3 take away 1, so this is going to be t squared, and then minus this 2 come over here, so we got 2 there, and then times, and we have our fraction, 7 over 2, and then the power of uh, t is going to be just 1, because 2 take 1 is just t, and then minus, there's a 1 here, so that comes up here, 1 times 6 is still 6, and then this becomes 1, take away 1 is 0, t to the power 0 is just 1, so we're just left with 6. And the plus 8 is a constant, so we just get a 0 for that. Okay guys, let's simplify this. The 3 and 3 can cancel, so we're left with 2t squared here. And the 2 and 2 will cancel, so we're left with minus 7t here. And then we have our 6, so our change of this distance with respect to time is 2t squared minus 7t minus 6. So we are told to find velocity when t is equal to 5. So obviously guys this is our velocity. So v is going to be equal to 2 instead of t we are going to put 5 because we know what time is. So that's going to be 5 squared minus 7 and then 5 in there minus 6. Alright, so bid mass 5 squared first, 25 times 2 is going to give you 50 and then 7 times 5, this is going to give you negative 35. Take away 6 is going to give you 9 meters per second. So your velocity then at t equals 5 is 9 meters per second. All right, guys, now for part B, we are told to find time when the particle is momentarily at rest. All right, what does that mean? It's not moving, is it? That means velocity is equal to zero because there is no change of distance. So we're going to make this velocity function equal to zero. So I'm going to say 2t squared minus 7t minus 6 is equal to zero. Now guys, you need to be very careful here because there is a temptation to split the middle term and have three and four, but you need to watch this sign over here. It's not going to work. So what I have done, guys, is sorry, not splitting it. I have used the completing the square method to find T. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we need uh, 1 as a coefficient of t squared. So I'm going to divide throughout by 1. So that means I'm going to have t squared here. 2 divided by 2 is 1 minus 7 over 2. And then I have my t 
minus 6 divided by 2 is 3 and that's going to give you equal to 0. Now guys when I complete the square I remove the 3 here the constant and just place it on the other side so now I have t squared minus 7 over 2t equals to 3. Let's complete the square guys so we have our bracket and then we have squared and a minus and I'm going to put my equal and my 3 on this side. Okay, so I've needed t there, I have a minus there, so minus and I need to half the coefficient of t. So 7 over 2, if you half it, you will get 7 over 4 guys. Now you need to take away this number squared, so 7 squared is 49, 4 squared is 16. Okay, so if you're not sure on how to complete a square, please leave me a comment and I'm happy to do a few more examples, even though I have got some videos, but I don't mind to do some more. All right, guys, let's continue with this. Now we have t minus 7 over 4 squared uh, minus what I'm going to do is move this 49 and bring it to this side so now I'm going to have it as 49 over 16 plus 3 now what I want to do is release this t by square rooting both sides so on this side I will have t minus 7 over 4 equals to plus or minus remember that when you square root you have plus or minus 49 over 16 plus 3. Guys, now what you have is t equals to uh, 7 over 4. So I'm adding 7 on both sides in order to get rid of this 7 over 4. So I'm adding 7 over 4, guys. Uh, plus or minus square root of 49 over 16 plus 3. So guys, if you square root that, then you will get 7 over 4 plus or minus and 2.4622. Right, so the first value, if you work this out, if we take the positive value, then we get t equals to uh, 4.2122 seconds. And then if we take the negative value, then you get t equals to negative 0 0.7122. We obviously can't have negative time, so we can't use this value. Now we're going to say t is equal to 4.2122 seconds, guys. So this is a time when the object is momentarily at rest. All right, guys, now we are asked to find displacement when the particle is momentarily at rest. So what is the displacement at that point? Right, we know that's going to be 4.2122 seconds from the beginning. Now all we have to do is substitute this value into our displacement function. Okay, so displacement is going to be equal to 2 over 3. Now where we have t, we're going to put 4.2122 minus 7 over 2. Remember this function was given to us guys, so 4.2122. We need to square this minus 6 and then 4.2122 and then we need to add 8. Guys, if you work this out, you will get minus 29.55 meters. Obviously, we're going to take the positive value of it. So we're going to conclude and say displ displacement is 29.55 meters. All right, guys, now we're doing part D. We're asked to find acceleration of the particle when t is equal to 4 seconds. So we were given the displacement function. We differentiated to get the velocity and now we need acceleration. What is that going to be? Well, it's simply the change of 
velocity divide by the time taken right so what we need to do here is differentiate this velocity function to get our acceleration function okay so acceleration is going to be equal the differentiated of this function so 2t square is going to give us 40 and 7t is just going to give us 7 negative 7 is just going to be equal to uh, 0. Now this is our velocity function guys. Now when t is equal to 4 seconds then a is going to be equal to 4. We substitute the value of time and take away 7. So this is going to give us 16 take away 7 which is going to be equal to 9 meter per second squared. Guys, uh, this is the end of part D. Now, let me show you how everything ties in together on the graph, guys. All right, guys, first of all, you can go to Dismos or GeoGebra to draw your graphs. All you have to do, you go in and you type in these functions that you have. The first one is given and then you have differentiate one you get that one and for acceleration is this one now what i have done is got got in and drew all the graphs and you can see exactly what uh happened how it ties in so if we look then first part momentarily at rest that means v is equal to zero so my red graph you can see here the function is a velocity function zero is over here right so if you go right down you can see the distance there is 29 okay is over here the green one represent our displacement so you can see displacement at this point you read over here of course and you can see the velocity v is equal to zero the blue line here is our acceleration guys now what we were asked to find the acceleration when t is equal to four so t equals to four is here and if we go up here we can see that's exactly nine uh, meter per second per second so now you can look at the graph guys and that's your um, object at rest v zero velocity and that's four seconds for your acceleration that is showing you is nine meter per second per second all right guys i hope you will make use of graphs and these uh, programs are free to use so just go ahead and learn and learn and learn thank you for your patience guys have a good day bye for now